with each of these leadership dimensions. I'll give you a historical example, good, bad, or indifferent of this dimension playing itself out. I'll give you a modern day business case study. Leadership dimension number one, creating common purpose. And why is common purpose important? Wilson Learning conducted a survey of 25,000 employees in the technology and finance sectors. And they asked them a whole bunch of different questions. The response was, we need our leaders to tell us what the work unit is supposed to be doing and why. In other words, we need our leaders to provide us with a common purpose. I've talked to leaders in corporate America who will say, yeah, here's our common purpose, and everybody knows what it is. And then you walk out to the cube or out to the factory floor and ask people, what's your common purpose? And they either say something different or they have no clue. So this is uh, General Robert E. Lee on the right-hand side there. He was the uh, commanding general, as I mentioned a minute ago, of the Army of Northern Virginia. And the gentleman on his left is James Longstreet, who was, at the time of Gettysburg, Lee's primary subordinate uh, and most trusted lieutenant. Whatever else you might say about Lee, I would argue Lee is one of the great soldiers of American history, but that the three days of Gettysburg were not his best three days. But whatever else you would say about him, I would give him credit for behaving in a way and, and conducting his affairs in a way that made it clear to at least one person, to at least one person, that they could say whatever they wanted to him, that they could give him whatever kind of feedback they thought he needed, and that was Longstreet. Do you have a Longstreet in your professional life? Do you have at least one person who has your best interests in mind, okay, has your best interests in mind, who is willing to tell you the truth. If you don't, the challenge is why not and what will you do about it? When the entrepreneurs that started the company decided they needed uh, professional management, they brought Meg Whitman in in 1998 when she started 5 million in revenues and 30 employees. By the time she was done, 8 billion in revenues and 15,000 employees. She absolutely insisted that she get feedback she would create member conferences where she would bring everyone together and she would ask them, the people who were actually the users. She would say, you know, the users of eBay actually know more about it than the employees do. So these are the people I want to talk to. So an example of a leader who not only sought out feedback but was manic about it and it was like the air that she breathed. If I had to identify the number one challenge for organizations, wherever they are, I think it's around communication. He had significant challenges around communication. So he was a type of leader that held information close to the vest. He did not share information with his subordinates. He was not in any way, shape, or form a developer of his people. His subordinates didn't know what the battle plan was and didn't know what he was thinking as he split his forces famously not one, not two, not three, but four ways during the course of the battle. Uh, the battle was lost and, and Custer and the men in his immediate command uh, were wiped out to a man. So an example of a leader who was a poor communicator on multiple levels. I don't know how many times I've talked to a corporate leader who says, I communicated this, I communicated it at this meeting, I sent out an email, I talked to the person one on one, and the person still doesn't get the message. Um, and that's, that's the nature of communication. What matters is not what you think you've conveyed, but what your audience understands. Experience is important. I mean, we all know if we put our hand in a hot burner, there's going to be pain. I mean, we couldn't get through our lives if we didn't rely on skills and experiences that have gotten us to this point. Proceeding with a course of action based on skills, experiences, techniques that have worked for you in the past isn't always the way to go because sometimes you may be facing your Gettysburg or you may be facing your little bighorn. It requires a new way of thinking. So this idea, step back, think twice, get input from people you respect is very important. It's interesting, I was having a discussion with a CEO of a large public company in Minnesota and talking about the, you know, the quarterly thing that they have to do with the analysts and, and I just said to him, you know, isn't it stupid that that's the measure? And he said, it's absolutely stupid but it's the game I'm required to play. Yep. Companies are so focused on stock price and making sure the shareholders are happy and what's happening this quarter and the next quarter, they're not looking down the road and making what might be tough decisions today that are going to benefit them in the long run. I've had a lifelong interest in history. God bless Best Buy, a lot of companies would have said, hey, that's a great idea, Jeff. Why don't you shut up and get back to work? <laughs> um, and they didn't. And they supported me. They even made it my job at a point in time. So that's what I was doing. I had the best job in corporate America. I was an entrepreneur who got a paycheck every other week into his bank account. So. Uh, and then, uh, as we all know, the economy went south, and in 2009, Best Buy offered a buyout to, to all of its corporate employees, which I immediately knew I had to take advantage of because it allowed me to um, 
uh, to continue to work this Blue Night thing and to write a couple books and to do what I'm doing right now, which is what I love. This is my passion right here. So that's the story. Thank you.